12 and 1 Bombers back at it Saturday afternoon on the road in the hammer against the Tiger Cats. And uh, I think we're all still buzzing over that amazing atmosphere and big blue bomber win in the Banjo Bowl on the weekend. And to talk about it and look ahead for the champs is the man, Jackson Jeffcoat from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on WST. Jackson, thanks so much for doing this. It's great to have you on the show again. Good to be back on. Good to be back on. I'm excited to chat with you. How you uh how you feeling after that big win on Saturday? I'm feeling good. Uh you know how they say 24 hour rule, so now on the Hamilton and uh I'm excited about them. I like the, playing in Hamilton. Well, a- absolutely. I mean, uh, uh we do have to quickly talk about these last couple of games against the Riders. I mean, two very different games. Uh, uh and, and you know, maybe go back to the Labor Day Classic from a defensive perspective. That was not the way I'm sure you guys wanted to to start. I mean, a touchdown right off the bat. And, uh, you know, you held in and held them to a couple field goals in key points to not get too far behind. And then everything switched up in the second quarter. And then the second half was sort of that bomber defense we've been become so accustomed to, allowing only one point. When you look back at that game on the road, how did you think you and your, particularly the defensive group, sort of evolved through the game to help you guys get the win? I think we just started figuring out what they were trying to do. Uh, that was the biggest thing. We looked at the film we were watching. Uh, we okay, they're just trying to run this, and decided that like. We're not going to let them get what they want to do with what they want to get. We're going to make sure that we stop them and impose our will on them as a defense. How um, do you guys look at film at halftime? Like, you know, when well, something like that happens, like a, is there, what happens? We have an iPad that you're able to look at some of the plays uh, from a, from a far view. So you watch the plays and see what, what teams are doing. Coach will come in at halftime and talk to us, try to make adjustments and whatnot. At a certain point, though, I imagine it's a lot of execution. I mean, especially when you're going back to back against a team. I mean, you know, there are probably some things you could do better. And uh, the one thing that this defense consistently does is exactly that when you need it. And I mean, it was a really strong half of football in Regina, um, you know, against a team and a, qu- a quarterback that was playing quite well. And yet only one point on the board in the second half. For sure. For sure. Yeah. It's, uh, I think, it's, like you said, it's a lot of execution. We got to make sure that we, we stick to our X's and O's and do what Richie, what, what his game plan. I mean, that's important. Richie calls a good game and we just have to execute. Hey, you know, we talk so much uh, and deservedly so about Mike O'Shea, everything that he's created with this team, the, 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 the identity of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as a team. Uh, but you mentioned Richie Hall. He's been here for a while and has been a huge part of, um, what well, what do people maybe would they like to know about Richie Hall and how important he has been to the success of the Bombers defense in your mind, Jackson? Well, Rich is just uh he's extremely smart. He's played the game. He's been in the shoes of where our DBs have been. So he kind of understands just what it takes to to be successful in that in that realm. And also he's gotten brought in good coaches, uh James Stanley, Jordan Younger, uh Daryl Patterson. Guys that have also played football as well and know the game and are able to coach and teach um, and show us what needs to be done. So, yeah, but Rich is great. He's just smart. Like, he just knows like he just knows what to call at the right time. Perfect. You know, we had, uh, we had Nick Dembski on the show last week, and he was sort of lamenting, you know, these back-to-back games where he said, ah, oh, you know, you can only – watch so much film, you know, of the same team going back and forth. But he also said it was somewhat of a, maybe a simpler practice week going up against a team in the second end of back-to-backs. Uh, all that being said, you guys knew the, what the job was going into Saturday. And, uh, man, that was a full team performance all around, uh, putting up 50 and uh, having a big game on the defensive side of the football. I mean, uh been around here for a while. I, I got to tell you, from a from a fan standpoint, the atmosphere in that game before the game during was, I think, is as good as it's ever been. Um, what was it like being a part of that on the field, having everything go your way pretty much from the first drive? It was a lot of fun. I mean, you uh, <laughs> people talk about SAS being sick and whatnot, and uh, we've been there before in the Great Cup in 2019. A lot of us are sick, myself included. 
were not feeling well. We were under the weather, had to come and play, like not feeling well. And so I understand how they, they might have felt, but like at the end of the day, it's your job. You got to get it done. And we're not going to feel sorry for anybody when there's things going on. I mean, no one feels sorry for us. So uh, we just made sure that we got, we handled and executed uh, and played the way we knew we can play, especially in front of our fans. We got the best fans in the CFL. Uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, just from your perspective, you've been here for a while. I mean, that scene, the vibe, the atmosphere, um, as I said, was as good as I can remember. What was it like to be on that field? How did it feel to come out in the tunnel, see all that blue and, um, and experience the banjo bowl and put an emphatic W on the board for uh, the fans to go home happy and continue their weekend. It's just incredible. It's incredible to play in front of our fans. It's incredible to have that atmosphere that, that, as loud as it gets. Um, I don't know. I love playing at home. I, uh, it's a, it's a special place for me, even coming from the university of Texas and playing in front of 101,000. I mean, IG field is up there with them. Well, I, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. I was saying on Monday, I mean, as, as, as great as it was to see the NFL back, uh, I don't, I, I think I would feel confident putting up the atmosphere in and around IG field on Saturday afternoon against just about any of the games that was played in the four down game this weekend. And uh, listen, it was, it was fun to be and a big part of that is obviously what the fans are bringing, but also what you and your teammates do week after week after week. But I wanted to ask you about that. I've thought for a long time that there's a special connection between this team and the fan base, and it's really grown. And it started before the team even won the 2019 Grey Cup. Now that you've been here for a while, um, do you feel that same way about a real connection? I mean, we saw it after the game with so many players sticking around to greet fans on the field. And, of course, a great turnout for fan appreciation. And, and it really does seem like your team, more than any other team I've been around, look forward to those op uh, opportunities to interact with fans and sort of make their day, considering the support they're giving you guys when you're on the field. Yeah, I've said it many times. It's just something special with the fans. I mean, even when we... We didn't know how many fans we were going to have uh, in the COVID year. And just having people come out and still show us love and still hit us up, telling us, like, man, you guys are doing great. Even when we weren't, even when we lost, like, people were saying, like, man, we're, we're behind you guys. It doesn't matter. Like, we, we love you guys. You, what you've done for the city has been amazing. Um, and, and that means a lot. I mean, a lot of times when teams or well, fan bases have lot, lots of wins, or have won back to back or whatever, uh, they get spoiled and like just want to be on you all day. If you lose, they're like, "Oh, they're terrible. Oh, they're bad. And they're not like they're not like the other team." But no, our fan base was still there for us, still rooting us on. Uh, they believed in us. Well, thankfully, you guys have raised the bar high enough that there hasn't been many opportunities, even if people wanted to be naysayers. Just look at what's happening and look at the scoreboard each and every week, and it's pretty clear who the bosses of the Canadian Football League are right now. Hey, what uh, what's a sat a huge win in a rivalry game to go to twelve and one? What's Saturday night after the game for like for Jackson Jeff coach? You go out with the fellas, you just hanging out on the couch with an ice pack. I mean, uh, what's uh, what was Saturday night like for you and the fellas after that big win? Uh, it wasn't super exciting. I think a couple guys went to Nicolino's, uh, went there, got some pizza, whatnot. Some of us just hang out in the stadium for a little bit together. Um, I'm a little, I was a little boring. I had two puppies here at home. So I, uh, I came back, uh, ate a little bit of food, hung out with them. I don't even remember what else I did. I just relaxed. Uh, normally I'm suit, I'm too exhausted to do anything. Uh, but it was a, it was nice. It was relaxing. Uh, I'm not a big go out guy. I'm 31 years old now. So, and been there, go. done that. <laughs> Just yeah, want to get ready for the that. next game. Well, you don't want a serious note. I mean, we spend so much time talking about what the practice, we know when you guys are out there, but for the couple days after a game, when you guys are off, I mean, are you back in the facility uh, getting treatment and whatnot, or is it just a great opportunity to, uh, and obviously you did have the fan appreciation day, so that was something that guys took part in, but more often than not, would you be horizontal doing what many fans are doing maybe the day after the game, and that's just resting and recuperating? Yeah, I think that's a big thing for me. Um, 
I just like to relax. I like to get my body right because I want to be ready for the next week. I mean, this this is my job. So, uh, and we don't get to play this game very long. So I want to make sure that I'm I'm doing everything I can to to be the best possible. Uh, I think uh, celebrating, partying, all that, I can do that when I'm done. Like, yeah, I celebrate a win, but I uh, I try to do what's best for my body. Well, you mentioned the next one. The next one is Saturday afternoon in Hamilton, a place where I'm sure you've got some fond memories of, considering the uh, the last trip out there. But um, I mean, you've played this team in the last two Grey Cup matchups with everything on the line. Um, you know, you don't see the East teams as much, but is it uh, is it a little special, or does it bring you guys back to the, some of the biggest games you've ever played going up against a Hamilton team that doesn't have the record that we're used to from the last two seasons? Mm -hmm. this, this Hamilton team is still good. They're still a good team. They just had some things go wrong with quarterback and just injuries, uh, kind of like us having injuries. Um, so it, it's, uh, like I said, I like playing in Hamilton. They have a good atmosphere. they got great fans. They're loud. It's a fun place to play. Uh, and this team is physical, so it's a fun challenge for us to go against another physical team and hey, uh, continue playing the game we love. Jackson Jeffcoat's with us from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Speaking of injuries, some great news on that front is uh, your guy, B.A., Brandon Alexander, back practicing with the ones today. Um, how big of a part of the team is he, and has he been even without playing so far this season, and how much will he bring to the lineup when he's able to uh, suit him up again with you guys? Um, he's BA is special. He's a special guy, special player, special friend to me. Uh, I'm excited to have him back. He's a leader back there in the secondary. Um, we, uh, we desperately, desperately needed our, our, our center guy, our safety in the, in the back, just to be able to, to help out and discourage people from throwing it down the middle. Um, he's, a uh, he just he gets things done. I mean, he uh, he's gonna come out and play well. He'll do well. He's got a special energy level too. It seems. I mean, e even away. I mean, you see him in the middle of winter doing a, a a fan engagement thing. I mean, he comes with a special level of energy. I imagine that is never more apparent when you're outside in between the white lines. Oh, definitely, definitely. He does have a special energy. He's a special person. He's just uh, he's genuine. He's a real person. He you you anybody can talk to him. I don't know if he has a mean bone in his body. As much as people want to say, like, oh, he's trying to hit people like that. He did that. No, he just he just plays football the way it's meant to be played, and that's hard. Well, uh, that uh, goes for uh, pretty much everyone wearing that jersey right now. Saturday afternoon in Hamilton, 3 o'clock start here in Winnipeg. We'll uh, all be watching here at home, and then looking forward to another game against Saskatchewan the following week here at home. Jackson, before we go... Um, Greg Ellingson was on with us, and we got to meet Zeus, his dog. Uh, Piper seems to me make appearances every time Mike McIntyre's there. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you are are the new members of the Jackson Jeffcoat household around? Would you like to show off the pups to uh, fans of the Blue and Gold? <laughs> they're not new members. I just call them puppies. They're not puppies, but they're. I don't know if you can even hear them. They've been playing around this whole time. Come here. Yeah, well, we knew that they were somewhat around in the uh, in the building. So give us a little introduction to uh, to Team Jeffcoat. This is Nala. She's the oldest. She's three years old. Uh, the funny thing about my dogs is that my mom's dogs had them. My mom's dog and my little sister's dog had puppies. So I got I got the puppies out of them. I'm normally a big dog guy, but I got little little dogs now. And the other one, T'Challa. Come here. This is T'Challa. He doesn't normally stay still, but here he goes. Well, so well behaved, jumping on the program today. Knew he was going to get a little camera time. Yeah, yeah, he's being good. Nala's trying to get back up here. Come here, girl. Come on. Well, you can get get the whole team up here to finish up finish up our visit today. This is uh, <laughs> this is great. The people always goes nuts, and you know, listen, if you're listening on the podcast right now, <laughs> this is a good reason to pop into the YouTube so you can see. <laughs> The uh, two lovely little dogs of Jackson Jeffco. Those those Nala, two keep key, T'Challa. Uh, they keep you busy when uh, when you're away from the stadium. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. I was just uh, talking to my uh, 
I forgot who I was talking to, but I was saying I feel like a single dad with two two little kids and having to come home and, and take care of them all the time. Well, I got to tell you, you've been taking care of your opponents pretty darn well along with your teammates so far. 12-1. and one. Can't wait for the game on Saturday and can't wait to, wait to see what this team's capable of throughout the regular season and hopefully on a, another playoff run ending the way the last two went. For sure. We got to get it done. We got to keep it going. We're not done yet. Jackson, all the best. Continued success, man. Be well and thanks for doing this. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, my pleasure. Appreciate you. 